Hi, Josie. What is going on, Vanessa? How have you been? I'm doing well. It's a rainy day here in San Diego. Yeah, Mr. Jeff Kite. He's in a band called The Voids. And uh, if you guys don't know who The Voids are, they're super fun. Um, fronted by Julian Casablancas from The Strokes. And if you don't know who they are, you've been living under a rock for the last 20 years or 15 years. How long they've and been if a band. you don't know who The Strokes are, open the blinds like just a little bit, peer outside into the outside world. <laughs> yeah. I'm really, I've been listening to The Voids all morning and uh, I'm really loving them. They're so fun. I'm wondering if they have anything new coming out. I guess we'll find out um, from, from Jeff. He has another Mr. project Jeff. too called Beat Club that uh -huh. is super interesting. Really enjoyed listening to a lot of them. Really. Um, and does he sing in that band? Is he like the front person in that band? A couple of things, but mainly keyboards. Every time before a show, I always put on perfume because I feel like I want to smell good on our show, you know? So and for smell -a vision Josie smells just lovely today. I, I usually smell like so good. But, you know, on a side note, um, my uh, business partner in perfume, because I make perfume, Florida United, Hope, Irish. was like, you won't believe who's making perfume. And she got me a sample. Can you see that? Oh, little Miss Dolly Parton. It's Dolly. So I smell like Dolly today. I don't know if you can tell. Am I, am I like emitting Dolly vibes? I hope so. She's so sweet. I love that yeah, one. If you're on Dolly frequency, I think uh, things are going to be pretty good. Exactly. I wonder if... Uh... Jeff will be able to tell, like, there's something with something the aura. about Josie today. Mm -hmm. Something really special. We've got Dolly on my side today, people. What is this? Well, hey, you're like, maybe it's like, you're getting the Dolly vibes too. Like, the, big it, hair. the bigger the hair, the closer the to God. The humidity always what they say? wild and wacky things for me. <laughs> yeah. I do have naturally curly hair, but I am. Um, I help it. Uh -huh. Rollers over here. You don't want to see my hair when I wake. If I don't blow dry it, it's I like Coco twins. Everyone, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's more like um, Eddie Van Halen or like any big <laughs> like '80s hair band. Like I wake up sometimes. <laughs> Max is like, "Oh my god, go look in the mirror right now. You have to see your hair." And I like I like the, the motion mirror. when I wake up. All right. Oh my God. Jeff Kite is here. So let's let him uh, in. Yay. You better make sure his hair game is on. Yeah. Well, well, let's see. All right. Hopefully he has that like super awesome COVID hair that like, hasn't been tamed. Maybe he'll have a beard. Hello. Uh, hello. Good morning. Uh, hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm well. I can hear you, Vanessa. But... Hello. Oh, there you go. Hey. Okay, hold on. And I'm Josie. How you doing? I'm good. Nice to meet you. And you're on up to your ears. How do you feel about it? I feel great. Are we All right. Are we going? We're going. Oh, just shit. Going? Let's jump right in. Okay, cool. Well, it's I not to edit it um afterwards. So okay. those things that you know. So we get into a conversation where later you're like, you know, maybe don't tell the world that. Okay. You can send me an email and be like, feel free to admit, uh, you know, hey, admit man. this portion because my life's an open book. Fire oh, away. They say that. And then. <laughs> oh, really? People, people chicken out? Um, chicken out. But there's definitely been a couple of times when people have been like, 
you know, remember when I told you about that show that I went to? Maybe don't put all the details in there. Or okay. or, or about um, a shit talk. If people shit talk other like other bands or other like members yeah. of the band. Fuck, fuck I always guys. admit that even if they don't ask me because I feel <laughs> like that's their experience with that musician. And I just wouldn't want someone else to say, oh, well, they were a dick to them. So fuck that. I'm not going to listen to them now. You know what I mean? Because wait, who was they a dick just to really who? love that music you- and they'll never come in contact with that person anyway. So like, don't hold that one experience with a different person against them. You know, I'm confused who the people are in this situation though. Who's being a dick to who you got, you're being the dick. No, it's like, um, it's- other musicians other musicians yeah and it wasn't Reese from Trail of Dead and it wasn't Lemmy I don't think just kidding okay (laughs) like as we were doing this show which Josie somehow has dropped off here sometimes her Mm. internet's wacky who's where you're I'm in San Diego okay cool she's in Austin oh she says she got kicked off and she needs to be let back in um, hold on one second. I'm just gonna text you. Sure. Sorry for the delay. Oh my god, that's totally fine. I don't know. These are the these are the problems I'm dealing with over here. Yeah, I'm talking about robots, man. Yeah, I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, our we might be the robots in that way. I like to think I still have free will. Do 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 we? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. All right. I'm. Set, I just sent Josie. Age away. old question. Yeah. I. Hmm. <laughs> Not to get too woo on you, but yeah, I do believe in like metaphysical stuff and like manifesting and um, you know things like that. So I do feel like we have free will. I do feel like we can. I do feel like we can manifest our destiny. So I like to think I have free will. That if I condemn myself to one thing, then that's probably what's going to happen. Right. And that would be free will, right? Deciding. Make a yes. decision that that's what you want to do with your life and then do it. Mm-hmm. Unless it's programmed to let, you know, if, if like this is a simulation, then it, it's you're programmed to think that you have control that way. Right. I do think. Not spying that our computers are doing on us, but our, the, the researching, the way they're thinking about us while we interface with all of these things, you know. Oh, hello. Yay. Sorry. I, there's something up with the, I'm on my phone in my house. So. Okay. I'm gonna wow. See, you got a lot of records. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah. it's nuts. Um, Respect. Okay. Uh, I'm going to see if I can uh, walk to the back or to my studio and see if I keep you guys. Hang on a second. So sorry about that. I don't know what the hell happened. Oh, don't so, worry about one, it. Un momento. All okay, the so snow is finally thawing. Beautiful day here, as you can see. I know it's going to be almost ninety degrees. I was telling Vanessa, and like three weeks ago, it was nine. It's so crazy. What? Okay, what? wait. I you're... know. Ooh. Are we flowing? Where are you? Back in the studio. She's I'm in Austin, Austin, Texas. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. That's okay. We were just talking about artificial intelligence. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, well, cool. Um, sorry. I'm so sorry about that. That sucked. Um, still don't know what's happening, but all right. Oh, well, shit. Now I have a low battery. You've got to be fucking kidding me. <sighs> okay. Because <laughs> I'm on my phone. I didn't think I was going to be doing the interview on the phone. Sorry. Um, Do you well, have a charger that you this? can plug it in right now? Mm-hmm. I can do. you please leave this whole part in? No. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we'll but, include her with the record like, binder. What? Seriously, seriously, Jeff, like that, this is not normal. I'm no, not- I know, but but like this is actually good stuff and people need to see the real deal. I'm fucking early, aren't I? I'm on time. I know my Josie shit. Josie is like normally. the earliest person. She'll text me like an hour before and be like, I'm totally ready whenever yeah. you are. And I'm like, 11.45. And then I shall still show up at like 11.50. And I'm like, okay, I'm here. And I just need to do one more thing. And she's like, Vanessa. Yeah. <laughs> I would leave it in if I were you. It's not my show, but that's what I would do. 
I leave okay. people like people, I think people like this stuff. See, this is the thing you that you, you could use this is a metaphor for for even music and bands, you know. I think the more that people can have like the day of of going into a studio and coming out with your Lion King baby and you know where you've developed this precious idea for long. I feel like that time's done. You know, people like to see and want to see the accidents and and in the whole process, you know, they want to see all that oh, stuff. Oh, for sure. So like, sure. I think, uh, I, I don't know. God, you guys, oh my God, oh my God, okay. Well, just something a little more candid and interesting than-, than uh, I, I, Since I'm holding this flipping <laughs> phone, <laughs> Can we get on with the fucking interview, please? Yeah, yeah. I thought, dude, I thought we were kidding. underway here. We, we are. We are but... We've had a great time with you today. I'm, Come on, giving, this is I'm good. giving Vanessa. I'm giving Vanessa a hard time. Yeah. Because for Jack and you know. And I'm just my... like having a great time. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> She's all. Hey Vanessa, by the way, fuck you. <laughs> and your exciting timelines. <laughs> yeah. Are you good? I, I I really don't think it's gonna get much better than this right now. So like, okay. carpe diem, like let's go. Do All I right. look off? Gorgeous, Josie. Like ask it. your first question. Oh, by the way, this uh, questionnaire is called "Truth or Protect Your Rep." So feel free to lie your ass off or truth totally or protect your rep. rep. Okay, cool. Yeah, got it. Um, and they're really you know non-band, well, kind of band questions. Okay, mm -hmm. here we go. First go question. For Fire you, up. Jeff. Yeah. Um, what was the first, like, first show that you remember going to on purpose as a kid or a young adult? Um, well, there's two that come to mind right away because the first show that I ever saw in my life was Michael Jackson. Oh my God. What? Yeah. Josie's heart. That's how old I am. Um, even oh though my, God. It, it, my first show could have been so in much older than us, right, Josie? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was 1980. It was the Victory Tour, so it was actually the Jacksons. It wasn't even solo Michael Jackson, even though he did a few solo songs. Mm -hmm. I think it was an album that came out. I'd have to check the the history, but it was between Thriller and Bad that they did the Jacksons record. Um, and it's got that song. I think the main hit was, can you feel it? Can you feel it? That like where they're on the moon. Oh, and yeah. The, yeah, video, yeah, yeah, yeah. the video is incredible. Anyway, I was obsessed with Michael Jackson. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I, I told my parents, I really wanted to go s to that concert. Um, I don't think they were like, Hey, we should take the kids to see Michael Jackson. I think I was the, the, the energy behind them buying tickets um and i have very vivid memories i still think that that was a big deal in my musical like my whole story of wanting to do music and but i i so and then otherwise after that i feel like the first concert that i really wanted to go to on my own own was when i saw the grateful dead actually in 1992 a jam band. um with my it's first of all that Michael Jackson concert was I believe at Comiskey Park I grew up in Chicago so it was at the baseball field where the White Sox play nice uh -huh. and then I went and saw the Grateful Dead I remember in 1992 at Soldier Field uh with my friend and his older brother I don't know how he got dragged it somehow my parents let me go I was 13 I had braces on my teeth thought it was like this lawless fun scene I just gotten bar mitzvah you know, and they were like sure yeah you can go see the grateful dead <laughs> i was yeah you know. i was just gonna say that um max somehow got my shit working so um i was going to see if you could um admit me yeah oh my gosh all right This is great. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know what she <laughs> This is such a... oh Am I God. on? Okay. Am I am I on oh, like <laughs> Oh. <sh> <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Okay. Whew. <laughs> She's all, the all right, you guys, I'm back. Cool. For real. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. yeah, yeah. You better leave this all. I want the whole roller coaster of the first 20 minutes kept in. God. God. Everything's all crooked. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Jeff, it's so good to see you. Vanessa, hi. How's it going? Okay. Um, we just found out that Jeff's first show was MJ. What? That's amazing. So um, when you were growing up, what was your favorite cartoon? as a kid? <clears throat> um, I mean, I loved The Simpsons. The Simpsons was probably the first, might've been the first show I ever got into. Um, but even further back would have probably been He-Man. Right. Yeah. That's a good one. My brother and I watched that one too. Yeah. Um, okay. The next question is, um, you're currently playing in the voids, right? Yeah. Um, Voids, voids are going on tour, a hypothetical tour. Okay. And, um, and you can decide who you're bringing on tour, not the booking agent, not anybody, um, living or dead, your dream tour. Wow. Who are you touring with? Great question. Mm. And I would say like, I would say like, you know, have like an opening, like a first band you guys get to play in the middle mm -hmm. and then a headliner or, or, or triple headline, you know, bill or something. There's a list of, um, Julian was talking about doing a festival that we were going to put together with some promoters in San Francisco. Um, and there was a dream list of people, current people, obviously, um, Mm -hmm. and and it was like comedians and bands and stuff like that and uh that that'd be really i have it hiding in an email somewhere um that'd be cool to just rattle that off but off the top of my head now living or dead hmm um hmm i think maybe like it would be cool to have some portion of the night be like beethoven uh-huh you know um, and whatever the Vienna Philharmonic, you know, was, so he'd be there doing, I don't know if that's the, that's probably the headline. We'd be the open. We're probably the opener for everybody that I'm about to think of. It's okay. like, okay. So, Beethoven, I can see that we would be kind of trippy actually. Yeah. Cause I would rather get done playing and then be able to just enjoy the rest of the night and watch all of my dream touring, you know, mm -hmm. people. um, Maybe, uh, so that would be cool. Then maybe like, this sounds so pretentious, but maybe like John Coltrane. Um, pretentious, that sounds like dreams. Yeah, okay, cool. Love I that. wasn't sure. That would be cool. Favorite. John Coltrane, Orbids and Beethoven. <laughs> yes, let's just leave it at that. Okay, switching gears a little bit, but kind of on the same tip, um, mm -hmm. on this, tour with the Beatles, the Voids, and Beethoven. Yeah. Um, you are able to bring a food truck with you. What kind of food is it for the whole tour? Hmm. Um, see, I can't, I couldn't just be one type of food for the whole, the whole time, even if it was like the greatest sushi, you know, by the fifth day, I'm going to be like, can we get some pop? Can we have an, like a, some pizza or something? Right. So I think, um, I think it would have to be, do I have to pick one? Well, it could be like a restaurant. Like what restaurant would you have turn into a, a you know, a catering truck that could follow you on tour? Right. right. How about that. Um, there's a, uh, before lockdown, there was a neighbor, there's a restaurant in the neighborhood that I really like that I'm happy to, shout out in my neighborhood called Marvin, which is like a Spanish type of tapas restaurant. And um, I really like that they're on Beverly Boulevard for those of you listening in Los Angeles. Um, maybe I would bring them along. I love uh, some of this. I do. It's yeah. kind of like not a super huge meal and you get to just like graze. Yes. Yeah, that's my favorite.
Um, well, I don't know. Was, was that, um, I have a last question for you. Um, okay. Basically, it's just, what do you have going on now um, with the voids, with um, composing? Um, do you, are you guys have a new record? Are you working on something? Um, are you working on other projects? Yeah, so, so like the year, the lockdown year was, um, you know, the first few months was what the fuck is happening? You know, we didn't get together at all because everybody was wondering if the world was dying. Mm -hmm. um, and that at a certain point, we figured out that we could get tested, spend a week to 10 days a month um, get it. This is the voids I'm talking about, by the way, um, <laughs> at the studio and, uh, in, we're working on a record basically, uh, oh. that was supposed to be handed in a while ago. And so we're getting together a week to a week and a half a month where we will, um, try to finish a bunch of ideas that are, um, way hanging around. So it's close. Yeah. So there's a voids album that's 62% finished. Okay, cool. Um, and then otherwise, I just finished a, an EP with, um, with this young singer, this girl named Allegra, who is really talented. Um, she just moved to Los Angeles and we got introduced through a friend. And I think I'm going to continue working with her. Um, I don't know what her artist name is going to be yet or whatever. We're just kind of throwing paint, but um, it's sounding really good. I have an in another instrumental project with one of the guys from The Voids and one of the guys from Beat Club, actually, an old band of mine um, called Coastal Kites, which is just instrumental uh, hip hop, world music. I don't even know what to really call it. Um, we are finishing up some pieces of music that I wrote for a film uh, that I was doing some score for this year. So I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of things simmering right now. Um, oh. Yeah, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for Coastal Kites and what yeah. film that that you were doing the score for. It's a film called Habit, uh, and uh, my uh, my friend Janelle uh, directed it. Um, and I don't know what is going on with it necessarily right now. I watched it on. Um, on Zoom the other day, actually, because uh -huh. it's taking me through all the, the drops. I, I mean, I, I can understand for certain kinds of artists, you know, that you need the cutting edge qualities of certain types of cities that you don't get in other cities. Which is why people um, move to LA. I don't know that anybody that lives in LA says, oh, I love living in Los Angeles. But they do it as a quality of like, no, I like living in Los Angeles for this, 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 and this. But you and know what? I do. It. I, I thought that for a long time. And then um, because it took me a while to love it in the first few years that I was here. And the more friends that I made that grew up here, when I'm driving around with Jake or Amir from The Voids and we're driving past a baseball field and they're like, oh, this is where I play t-ball. And, and they're taking you into their childhood of LA a little and you yeah. start to see the, the soul of the city instead mm -hmm. of just the transient quality of people that come here and that are chasing dreams and really don't have any allegiance Roots. or, yeah. you know, or, or, you know, they don't, then it's different. Then you get to understand that it is really, a, there's a depth here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. There's a ton yeah. of history in Los Angeles. I will say that the city does. I've never seen a city do less to respect or preserve a lot of its history. True. You know, there is so much cool old Hollywood stuff that could be preserved and maintained. And you could feel that a little more in certain parts of, of the town, you know, of L.A., and you just don't. I think it's been interesting what they've been doing with a lot of the old theaters in downtown LA, whether it's like Orpheum or the Palace or the theater next to the Ace Hotel, you know, they're, they're renovating these old uh, art deco, old theaters that were 
collecting dust. Nothing was happening there for so long. Um, and they're beautiful. They're so cool. The bathrooms look like the bathroom in The Shining. You know, there's these crazy yeah. old porcelain. There's some really, really beautiful, amazing things about Los Angeles. Burbank is another one that is like, it seems like it's so nothing, but Burbank is actually really cool. Yeah. There's a lot of history in Burbank. For sure. Yeah, so. I was going to say about Iowa City is like, here you are talking about like, but there's a quaintness to LA in that there's a lot of history and, you know, hearing people who grew up here and whatever, but, and this is just my opinion of this conversation is like, but you guys love strangers. That's why it would be hard to move to a place that was so sleepy like that. Not enough strangers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just different. I mean, I, I don't know what to attribute these things to. I don't know if it's like staying put in one city for this long and it's just a restless feeling or if it's just getting older. I, to be honest with you, it's I don't know where I'm not out and about as much as I used to be um, and don't necessarily want to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, or just about maximizing space, yeah. um, especially where, yeah, you know, these kinds of this type of these things. Yeah. So, um, there's ways of, you know, connecting with a smaller community that seem really, uh, I don't know, really cool to me. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that doesn't mean I'm packing my bags right now. I but uh, it's it, there's there's rumblings. I, I, that's all. That's all. No one out there's gonna save you. Life is waiting on the I recognize you a lot more as a composer than a musician necessarily. Right. Yeah, that's because fair. It does seem like you are creating soundscapes that creating an environment for someone to like live with in not necessarily in the background. I mean, you certainly could sit and listen to that. I did just mm -hmm. by myself in the dark, just listen to it with nothing else going on. Awesome. Cool. Specifically just to listen. Um, but also I could see it, you know, my mind running through, I could definitely see it being like, Oh no, this would be great. Um, soundtrack. Right. You know, to a movie or. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a few reasons. I mean, I write music all day every day and I don't really like singing anymore or hearing myself sing. I love writing lyrics, I love writing songs, but I'm not doing that as much anymore. So I think the music is enough for me, um, I, just for my own things. There's a lot of times I'll be working on a track, whether it's a voids track or some other singers that I'm producing or working with where I'll just send them beats. Um, and then there's some days where, for whatever reason, a type of a piece that I'm working on feels like it wants to be something, something bigger than just a three and a half minute pop you know, song. Uh, or I at least want to allow it that room mm -hmm. before, I, before I decide like, oh, I'm gonna really truncate this idea and have this be the verse and have this be the, it, just to give it that form. Um, yeah. I have a little pterodactyl neighbor outside that's screaming and yelling. I'm not sure if that's coming through. It is, but it's all right. Uh, it's yeah, light yeah. in the background there. It's yeah. okay. Um, well. Have we I taken up enough of your time, Jeff? Looking, oh, I was I'm, like, oh I'm my God. Almost, beside my shenanigans took like half an hour. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, okay, you got favorite part of the please, interview. Please leave a portion of that. I don't know how you're going to chop this up. Do whatever you want. Um, I don't chop it up. Vanessa does. And so I'm sure leave, leave it in. It was good. Well, thank you so much for taking time out to hang out with us. And um, we will piece this together in a way that makes hopefully me not look like a complete idiot. And um, I'm usually the idiot. So. Highlights all of the wonder, wonderful, wonderful things that you have going on. And we can't wait to check out. Well, that was super cool. I'm glad that Chris thought to put us in touch. Um, oh, yeah. it's, it's funny because it's like, so Jason Hill nominated. Oh, yeah. Chris Sester, who nominated you. And 
we're going to keep this going. Who are you nominating? Thank you very much for spending some nice time with us. It was super fun. So nice meeting you. See you soon. We'll, we'll talk soon, hopefully. Yes. Sounds good. All right. All, right. All the best. See you. All right. You too. Bye. Josie, that was the most fun. Jeff Kite. If you guys don't know who that guy is, now you do a little bit. Now go listen to his music because he is brilliant and so interesting. B Club is fantastic. I just loved it. And the new Voids, I can't wait till it comes out. Yeah, he was so personable. And um, it like we could have hung on, like hung out all day, I feel like, if I didn't have all the crazy stuff that happened in the beginning. I mean, he's just like one of those... He, he seems like one of your friends, like a, that you could just sit around and talk about nothing and everything all day together. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been Up To Your Ears. I'm Josie. And I'm Vanessa. And it sounds good. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Thanks for, Thanks for watching. <laughs> How about that? Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.